Okay, so I wanted to make a video about working with large slabs. Um, I'm not making tables, I'm making rockers. And I plan to make three rockers out of these four pieces and this piece over here, okay? I got this wood from a store in my town called Woodcash. They've got some really great wood there and these were some figured walnut slabs. So it's very pretty wood and I wanna use it the best that I can. Um, if I look at them, the bottom portions of the slabs aren't very curly, but they have really beautiful color. At the top, there's really nice color, but a lot of figure. And I really want to kind of separate those two woods out because I think they'll look more congruent. Um, I'm going to make three rockers in total, one out of the figured, and then two out of the less figured wood. These are the templates that I use for my traditional Hal Taylor inspired rockers, okay? So I have pieces that describe the back braces, the rockers, the back leg, the arms, the seat, the front leg, and the headrest, okay? So what I do is I take all those pieces and I try to find where they're gonna fit on these slabs. The, the parts are probably a little bit hard to see, but it's these lines here, these black lines that are outlining the parts. And what I've done is I did my best to lay all the parts out. So again, the top part is more figured. So I want to try my best to make one rocker out of all the figured wood and then two rockers out of the less figured rock. The other two rockers are going to be a different design and require less wood. So I felt it was more important to get these parts laid out and cut out and then everything else I will use for the two rockers. Right away, we notice there are some very large defects in the wood. Major, massive knots. There are cracks. There are cracks on this one. There's some rot. There are inclusions. Again, big knots. Pieces completely missing. Unfortunately, you know, some of the most beautiful wood is often really close to these inclusions. So, what I have to do is I have to try to use the wood in the best possible way that gets me the nicest figure but also avoids a lot of the defects that I don't want in the rocker. So if I zoom in here a little bit, you can see some very, very big cracks. Here there's some minor inclusions, you know, and the problem is these slabs are very big. So it's very hard to look at both sides simultaneously. What I've done is I have taken and marked on here where I feel like the other side of the board has issues. When I first got the boards, I stood them up outside and I did my best to transcribe from one side to the other. So <laughs> on this side of the slab, this piece looks really beautiful. There's some really nice figure and some really nice colors, but on the other side, it's thin and cracked and it does not look good. So I know it's hard to see, but I've transcribed that bad side with this red line onto this side. So I know I shouldn't use any of the wood in here. Um, that's a hard part, you know, when you're dealing with slabs. What I like to do is I like to cut them into smaller pieces and then deal with them. So you can see these dark lines here. These are my cut lines. I've decided to cut around here and that will give me my one side of the seat and the other side of the seat and I've given quite a bit of extra room on on the edges just in case so there could be an inclusion in here that I can't see on either side this crack could go somewhere where I I don't know this inclusion could do something in the two inches of the thickness of the wood that I'm not aware of so I give myself a lot of extra room to work and uh, that will hopefully provide pieces that are usable. So again, you can kind of see the way I laid this out. I'm doing my best to pull the front leg out of here, my back legs out of here. You can see them just lightly traced on there. Um, I'm gonna try and get my headrest out of here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six pieces for the headrest. Uh, again, my seat and seat. And then I also have two front leg pieces over on this piece. I've got my two arms here because I thought this was really beautiful and I think they'll, they'll look really good on the rocker. So I pulled my two arms out of there. As I've done my best to leave 
large chunks of wood untouched. I didn't want to take my arms out of here because it's less figured, like I said before, but also I want to leave these large pieces to work with for my other two rockers. This piece, I did my best not to use it. I feel like I can probably get a lot of my rockers out of this because it's a good thickness and thing. And I can work around these large knots. So the next step in this process is I'm going to go ahead, take my jigsaw, and I'm going to cut along these lines here, these dark lines that I've marked on here to try and break this big slab into smaller, more workable pieces. If I have a board, and on one side I have a knot, and it seems like it's not in the same position on the other side, what I'll do is I'll drill a hole through the knot, and then I'll flip it over, and I'll drill a hole through the other knot. And if the drill holes are way off, I know that there is an oval-shaped area that I should not be using, right? And I have been in certain cases where I plan a piece around a knot, and then, unfortunately, the knot had slightly moved or had occurred at an angle and then it touches my piece. So that's what I will do to try and ensure I know the exact position of a knot. When I bring a large piece of wood into my shop, I cut it on the floor and I have to pick a side to put upward. And again, this is the more narrow side. That's one of the biggest constraints on this board. So I want this board facing upward when I'm placing my templates on it. And as you can see on this side of the board, this inclusion is, is huge. I need to avoid it. There's nothing in here that's usable. So what I did is I took my drill and I went right up to the edges and I drilled holes through, okay? I drilled a bunch that kind of defined the edges that I was concerned about. So if this is a very large board and you have to cut it up the way I do on the floor of my shop, I needed to know exactly where this edge was, where the wood was completely unusable. So again, this board looks a lot wider on this side but when I flip it around, there's a lot less usable wood. I want to avoid all this stuff. So again, I want to have this side of the board sticking up. As you can see where I've marked with the drill holes, I know where those edges are. So I know I got to stay away from that. If I had laid it down on this face, I might've thought, oh, well, I could probably sneak up to this little crack or inclusion, but I know I can't because of where my drill holes are. Kind of uh, what I was commenting on, this slab is a pretty good example. From the top, I could see that there is an inclusion somewhere in here, but I wasn't entirely sure how deep it went. And on the other side, I couldn't see a lot. I could just see a little kind of inclusion here, but it went all the way through and it actually went really deep. But the fact that I planned the seat to kind of stay away from, you know, this edge was quite important because now I think this inclusion probably goes quite a bit deeper in here. So this outer edge, if I had pushed it over here, might not have worked out. So what I can do now, now that it's a smaller piece, is I can probably just cut this off until I find where this inclusion ends and then butt my seat right up against that. So again, taking it from the large slab into smaller pieces, but pieces that have extra material to work on is very important. On this single piece, I have one side of the seat and the other side of the seat. This wood has sat for a little bit, so it has warped. Some pieces have warped a little bit. So instead of trying to flatten this whole piece to, before I cut my seats out, what I'll do is I'll cut this in half and then any imperfections or, or bends, curls or anything in there that are happening is basically divided into, right? So if there was a big kind of bow in the middle here, instead of trying to flatten the whole board, I'll cut it in two and then a lot of that undulation is actually taken out and you lay the board on a flat surface and it has a bow in it like this you know if you don't have to flatten this entire board the best thing to do is to cut it in half say for so for my seat example I'd have the seat over here and the other half of the seat on this side 
So instead of trying to get this whole piece flat before I cut it, I just cut it in half and then I have two smaller pieces. So then when you lay them down, basically you've got two much smaller curves in that board, right? So to get this board flat, you have to take a lot less off of these shorter boards. Instead of having to chew off all this and losing all this material, now you're just losing these tiny little corners on each piece. So that's just one strategy that I use to conserve wood. And the next step, just uh, on this, is I will take something like this, where I have my arms roughly drawn on here, and I will take the template again, and I'll take a really fine pen, a ballpoint pen, and I will draw the parts on, and then cut them out of the balance also. Right now, everything's very rough. For today, I just want to show you how I break down big slabs and try to plan it out the best I can to, to try and uh, use the wood most wisely. And again, grain matching. Like I, like I said, I had some pieces that were really, really curly and some other pieces that were fairly non-curly. So I didn't really want to mix those two. So assessing the wood, seeing what you have. And sometimes, you know, I got really lucky. The, the wood cache store that got me these slabs, they had them sanded. So I had a really good idea of what's going on. You know, normally it might have looked like this, you know, where the sander didn't hit it. And uh, I might not have had a very good idea of what the grain and the colors were going to look like. So I guess if you have the opportunity to purchase wood that is somewhat finished, even if it's just uh, skim planed or something like that, just to give you sense, that's a great idea. Thank you for watching and uh, good luck with your large pieces of wood.